All right, so today I'm coming to you from my wife's art studio, uh, gingerlydesigns.com, check her out. Anyway, so that's why you got more of an industrial background uh, here, and at the end I'll sh feature some of her uh, art and what she does, and uh, so check it out, especially around holiday season, it's a pretty uh, nice gift to give. But diet wasn't why I wanted to talk to you today. Um, today I want to talk to you because of what happened yesterday on Monday the 26th. And what we saw, or some of us I believe saw, was a jump in the vol of all. What do I mean? We saw a jump in the volatility of the VIX. A big old jump, like 17% jump in one day. Followed up with another half jump today. And what you saw was the VIX, uh, the volatility index also jump over 30. Uh, I believe it got up to 33, 32. And so I look at that and what that's telling me is that markets are at the top end of a risk range or they're pricing in something really, really, really bad. Really bad. And that's not cool, right? Because we don't need more bad stuff in 2020. I mean, I was just out in Colorado and their forests are burning at record uh, levels. And I get home here to Florida and there's another potential hurricane in the Gulf. I mean, how much more can we stand in 2020? Much less throw in the stock market and volatility and well, to be honest with you, it's a little freaky. So I'm gonna put up a couple charts today, uh, mostly focused on volatility, uh, the VXN, the VIX, uh, the uh, VVX, excuse me, VVIX, which is the volatility of the VIX. Crazy, right? Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about those jumps and why I'm bullish for the long run, but these are indicating possibly some high volatility times, probably up into the election and maybe a little further. But that other part of the market that I look at, the implied volatility element is at a premium, which is telling me markets are preparing potentially for a bull rally into the end of the year. The first one I'm going to look at is the volatility of the VIX, that's VVIX. So I'm looking at September 30th, where the volatility of the VIX uh, closed at um, 101.58. It basically pivoted there and jumped up uh, the next day, next trading day, and then it consolidated and busted out on the 9th up to a close of 109 pretty sizable jump since September 30th and then on uh, then on October 26 it broke out and jumped to 133 which is a major move roughly 14-15% uh, and then today on the 27th it jumped up to 135 only a 1.68% move so here's what this is telling me. Volatility is moved higher, creating vol more volatile markets. The implied premium or implied uh, volatility is now showing a major premium in a lot of the different uh, positions we're in, along with indexes. And what that's telling me is there's an enormous amount of hedging going on and they're paying a premium for it. And that is typically, if you look at it from a contrarian standpoint, that is typically a view of we're about to see a bull breakout here in the next couple weeks. So when I look at implied volatility and that premium, I'm comparing today versus 30 days ago. And we're seeing major premium pricing for hedging instruments over 30 days ago. And if you think about 30 days ago, we were more bullish. And so we saw more of a discounting at that point, and now we're seeing a 
premium on hedging, which is a contrarian, if you look at it from a contrarian standpoint, you can see a move higher. So the volatility index is telling us it's pushed higher. It's gotten up to close to its uh, da -da -da March, uh, early March uh, levels. So one of two things could happen. We could see a bust out in volatility, but based on today, the October 27th price action, it's telling me it's maybe topping and we're at the top end of the volatility uh, range and we may see that volatility start dropping. So let's check out the VIX. So since October 12th, we've seen the VIX go from 25 close to today, the VIX closed at 33. Anything over 26, we're a little skeptical about investing it, but where the VIX is now at around 33, it didn't make as big of a move or even close to a biggest move as yesterday on the 26th of October. And so what that tells me is we may be at the, once again, at the top end of the volatility range and that we may start seeing that go down. Apply that to the implied volatility of the hedging products out there and the premium they're uh, paying. It tells me that we may see a breakout as we approach the election or after the election. So I'm, as you can, if you look back at my, well, my, my last video, I talked about the next stock, stock uh, market rally. I, I'm very bullish at this point. And I know the environment isn't uh, warranting that, but mar the markets, markets in general, are behaving way differently than the economics are. So you can look at the economic numbers and it will tell you we're in more of a stagflation environment, rising inflation, uh, lowering, uh, rising inflation and, and slowing growth. Market is starting to ignore that as we come in to the end of the fourth quarter. I mean, here's the thing. Remember, money managers make money based on big returns over and above their benchmarks. And I'm referring to the guys who manage mutual funds or indexes or hedge funds or private investment houses. They make a typically a bonus is based on a percentage of their gains for the year. You're two months away right now from the end of the year. Some of these guys are lagging. They want their bonuses. So they're gonna get super aggressive, most likely after we see the uh, presidential election and honestly, I don't know, I don't think it really matters who gets elected. I think Wall Street's looking at it going, this is my last two months to make a big payday by year's end. Get confirmation of who the president is, and boom, we're off to the races. All right, so let's now check out VXN, which is the volatility index for the NASDAQ 100. If you go back to October 12th, where we saw a bit of a bottom in the VXN, we were at about 33. Yesterday on the 26th, we saw a jump to 37. Sizable jump, big percentage gain. But yet today, we're back down 2.27% at right around 36. What I see happening is you got a lot of the um, uh, tech companies reporting this week. Microsoft reported today. Um, and chances are we're gonna see uh, quite good earnings from these tech companies. We're gonna see volatility come off and we're gonna see the implied volatility premium escalate, continue to escalate because it's a hedging and we're taking a contrarian viewpoint compared to 30 days ago. And we're gonna see most likely a bull rally, in my opinion, into the end of the year. And it most likely will start, like I said, the presidential election is confirmation of what we deal with for the next four years. And markets only look at things from a I want certainty. Tell me the certainty and I will deal from there and they will allocate from there. So that's why you hear this uh, buy on the rumors, sell on the news. You see uh, stock prices being bought up up until earnings. They report earnings, stock price goes down even though they beat. Why does that make sense? Because the institutions are trading that. They're basing their decisions based on the rumor, selling on the news, and then reallocating those assets to other opportunities. And I think that's what you're gonna start seeing more and more as we report tech, technology company earnings and we get a confirmation of who most likely will be our president for the next four years. From there, Wall Street can take it and then move higher. 
uh, because once again, I go to, to the greed factor. Institutions need to make money and they make the majority of their money on the long side, not on the short side. So take that account as you're looking at markets. Don't get caught up in the emotional side of this. Look at the numbers, look at your indicators, follow them, build a solid process. And if you don't have time to do a solid process, find somebody who has a process that you can buy into and believe in and let them help you direct you on how to allocate and risk manage your money in the future. So like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm at my wife's art studio, so I'm gonna show you a couple of her pieces. Check her out at www.gingerleedesigns.com. Made in America, all handmade here in Florida. Uh, check it out, she's an incredible artist and an incredible human being. So she does a lot of uh, angels and crosses, but also has an abstract art side to her, which you'll see more and more in the future if you follow her on Instagram or Facebook. And she is shipping to stores uh, this month and uh, actually she'll her final shipments are in November but you can order on her website if your store doesn't carry your stuff okay so this is probably the most popular item super cool super detailed completely handmade um, you just don't get this quality and just the craftsmanship and the carrying uh, of a product from other other companies so check it out. Uh, in the meantime, if you will, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I am trying to educate and add value to the individual investor. And for those who um, find this overwhelming or have another J-O-B and don't get to spend as much time doing the focus and the research and the education they need to, to manage money, reach out to me. We have different programs that will help you guide your portfolio, plan for retirement, and create strategies to provide retirement income and manage your portfolio overall. So I look forward to talking to you soon. Check out Gingerly Designs.